Now, it's no secret that the capitalists own the porn industry. They actually own a lot of industries, but they most certainly own the porn industry. So at first, it seems to be so simple. The capitalists want money and they want to protect their business, so they encourage people to masturbate and normalize pornography. But if you go back far enough, you go to a time where normalizing pornography wasn't easy. There was a time when it was genuinely risky to have a pro-pornography message, and it almost became illegal at one point. Now, this is not to portray capitalists as weak or foolish when attaining power. It would certainly be a disservice to underestimate the threat the current system poses. However, capitalists have invested in things like Playboy and Las Vegas pretty early. And even now, they're trying to spoil morality and promote lust even more by promoting pedophilia and normalizing sexual harassment. It's gotten so bad now that even the last two presidents and one of the richest men on earth have been exposed as sexual harassers. Looking at the situation now, it makes sense in hindsight, but throughout the 20th century, there was a lot of resistance against the normalization of pornography. So it most certainly wasn't immediately profitable to sell or promote pornography. Even if it is just about money, nobody wants money for no reason. Money is always a means to get something and never a goal in and of itself. In this case, it's power. So, what if I told you that the capitalists are actively corrupting society, and they do this so they can weaken and control people? Let me explain. First of all, I do think it's worth admitting that I might have a political bias here. I am generally leftist. I don't think that capitalism should be done away with altogether, but I do think that we should think of capitalism more as an economic tool rather than an ideology. But as I'll explain, some of the capitalists are doing something so evil that most people can agree that they're bad, regardless of political leanings. Now, what are the reasons that people evolved to enjoy and have sex? Well, the first part is pretty obvious to make children, but there's also a secondary reason to consider here. Homosexuality is surprisingly natural, with most animals having homosexual specimens, but that is surprising to most people. You think that homosexuals would be wiped out by heterosexuals because heterosexuals are more willing to actually make children, but that's not the case here. But I would like to first of all point out that homosexuals can still make children by either using a surrogate mother, a surrogate father, or forcing themselves to have sex they don't enjoy. And also, animals don't just have to evolve as individual specimens, but they can also evolve as a group. So even if some individuals are disadvantaged by themselves, they can still strengthen the group as a whole. Homosexuality would still, however, be disadvantageous if it didn't have its own benefit. And that benefit is most likely the social impact it has. By having sex with someone else, you are establishing an emotional and psychological bond with the other person, thus it is pro-social. Now, some argue that I may be a little strict here, but these are the two reasons for sexuality that we know about. First of all, to make children, and second, its social benefits. Now, the problem is that masturbation doesn't do either of these. As for the sexual revolution itself, I do have mixed feelings. I do, for example, support the normalization of polygamy, as polygamy allows the, or at least helps the nuclear family be replaced by the extended family. But there was certainly a darker, more corrupt side to the sexual revolution. And it happens to be led by the capitalists. They actively utilized it to sell pornography and masturbation to the masses. 
You see, the culture war is not really between people who are left-wing versus people who are right-wing, people who are conservative or people who are liberal, people who are collectivist or people who are individualist. But the real fight is between those who are social and those who are asocial. And the capitalists happen to be asocial, or at least that's what they're promoting. If you are social, your sexuality reflects that. The capitalists, on the other hand, tend to be either asocial or antisocial, or at least tend to promote such. Thus, they'll often try to corrupt sexuality into the opposite of what it really is. They're the ones that want to break down and atomize society. Because, first of all, an atomized society can't rise up against those in control. If a society is atomized, it can't organize, it can't do anything that requires more than one person at a time. And if society is weakened, the capitalists will have almost complete power over society. And this is also why they like money. Money gives them economic power. And if you can control the money, you do control the economy. And another thing is, capitalism, when it takes power, will naturally make everything a microcosm for itself. In other words, almost every facet of life under capitalism itself becomes ultra-capitalist. You see, capitalism is a very psychopathic institution. It rewards psychopathic behavior. You can tell by the fact that they're always lying about what's actually going on, like with the climate change denial, and 20% of CEOs are literally psychopaths. So it does make sense that they would promote masturbation and prostitution and pornography. And I do say prostitution because prostitution is about the same as masturbation. If you're having a sex with a stranger, then you may as well be having sex with yourself because you don't know or love the prostitute. And overall, I'm all for free love, but I emphasize the love in free love. Now, if you don't like what the capitalists are doing, you might ask yourself, what can I do about this? Well, you can start off pretty simply, just don't masturbate. That's how you start it. Now, sexuality is less of something you can get addicted to, but rather something that is a psychological need. So some people may ask, well, isn't sexuality and having sexual stimulation a physiological and social need? Yes. And because of it, you are going to suffer. And that's exactly the point. You are going to suffer at first. But if you think of it like food, if you are hungry, you don't actively look for candy to eat because it doesn't actually fulfill you. It doesn't actually give you what you need. And if you aren't eating candy, only then will you get to realize that you're hungry and you should work to find some real food. It's the same with sexuality. And also think of it like this. If we can do this on a societal level, if we all agree to only have sex with those who we love, then it wouldn't be a problem anyway, and everyone would be much more happy and fulfilled. If everyone agrees not to masturbate or to use prostitutes, it will force people to socialize a lot more often. And when there's socialization, there's society. And that society will slowly undo the damage that has been going on since the Industrial Revolution. Considering that climate change has already gotten so bad that it's inevitably going to kill at least about a billion people. Such a society will also replace consumerism and neoliberalism and honestly most luxuries that we have today. Technology won't necessarily regress. But while humanity may lose out on complexity, it will make up for it in the depth of civilization. And perhaps it will only take one lousy millennium for the world to recover from atomization. This is Ashatistic signing out.